We're having a little test uh, tomorrow, so we're going to do some practice problems here. Get ready for that test. Uh, the first one is divide using polynomial long division. Uh, on the test, if you find a question that asks you to do this, I want to see the work for polynomial long division. If you only solve it with synthetic division, I'll give you no credit. I want to see each and every step of the, synth or the uh, polynomial long division. So here, I got a 2x cubed. I want to match that. What times x is 2x cubed, or 2x cubed divided by x is what? Well, that would be 2x squared, the first term of our solution. 2x squared times x is 2x cubed, plus 2x cubed times, or 2x squared times 3 is 6x squared. And remember here, we subtract. 7 minus 6 is 1. x squared, bring down the 9x. All right, what times this x is x squared? Well, that's got to be x. And we multiply x squared plus 3x, and we subtract 6x minus 20. Again, we want to match this 6x, so we're going to multiply by positive 6. 6 times x is 6x, and the 6 times this 3 is plus 18, and we subtract. All day in class, I saw a lot of people get this answer as a negative 2. Remember, it's minus 20 minus 18. And we would add the opposite, so we're adding two negatives, which will add up to a negative 38. So our remainder is a minus 38 over our divisor, x plus 3. And there's our solution. Again, we can check it with synthetic division, but when I'm uh, grading your test, I will be looking at these lines uh, to make sure you have all the intermediate, er, intermediate steps correct. Uh, number 2 is synthetic. So we're dividing uh, this x minus 2 into the fifth power polynomial. So to get ready for synthetic, I will swap that sign to a plus. So I got my 2 here. And let's make sure we have all powers of x. There's our fifth power. Oop, and then we go right to third, so we are missing a fourth power. And we have all the others. So we have our 6x to the fifth, 0x to the fourth, minus 2x cubed, 4x squared, minus 3x, plus 1. And we are going to divide that by 2. Drop our first number 6, multiply and add. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. 2 times that is 96. Uh, 96 minus 3 is 93. Uh, now, ooh, um, ooh, and then we double that. Times 2 would be 186. And we add and get 187. I thought something was missing. Okay, we started with x to the 5th, and we're going to knock that down 1 power. So that'll be 6x to the 4th, and then we just go right downhill. 12x cubed, 22x squared, 48x, 93, and then our remainder is 187 over x minus 2. There we go. Okay, uh, number 3. Use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find the indicated function value. All right, uh, we see this f of 3, and probably a lot of people immediately want to say, well, I'm going to evaluate at 3. That's going to be 3 to the 4th plus 5 times 3 cubed plus 5 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 minus 6. And you could do it that way, but that's not what the directions asked for. They want us to use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find this same answer. Okay, I'm going to divide my 3 into 1x to the 4th, 5x cubed, 5x squared, minus 5x, minus 6. I drop my 1, and I multiply and add, and multiply and add. Uh, 3 times 29 is the same as 3 times 30, which is 90 minus 3, 87. If we add there, we get an 82. 3 times 80 is 240, and then the 2 times 3 is 6, so that's a 246. And if we add there, we get 240. That's the answer we're looking for, just the remainder. Our remainder here is 240, and that's the same thing as f of 3. I plugged in all these 3s for my x's. Well, that's also going to be 240. All right, on to question 4. List all possible rational zeros. Well, in the numerator, we put the factors of the constant. Plus or minus 1, 2, 3, 6. Denominator are the factors of the leading coefficient 4. 
plus or minus 1, 2, 4. All right, I'm going to separate my answers into whole numbers and fractions. See all the whole numbers, 1 divided by 1, one divided, or 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, and 6 divided by 1 will be all my whole numbers, 1, 2, 3, and 6. All right, let's work over here to the 2. Well, here we have 1 over 2, or 1 half. Uh, and then I could do 2 over 2, but we already have 1, and that would reduce down to 1, so we don't have to write it again. Here, we have 3 over 2, or 3 halves. And if we do this, 6 divided by 2, well, that's 3, and we already have 3 on the list. So now on to the 4. 1 up top, 4 on the bottom, that would be 1 fourth. I could do 2 fourths, but that reduces to a half, and we already have it. Next would be 3 fourths. Add that to the list. And last but not least, 6 fourths, but 6 fourths reduced down to 3 halves, and it's already on the list. So we have four whole numbers, four fractions, positives and negatives of each. That is eight possible uh, rational zeros. Good thing we don't have to solve it and actually start checking them. Uh, for the last one, uh, similar to a bunch of the homework we did and uh, an extra worksheet we did in class, uh, it's a three-parter. Part A, list all possible rational zeros just like we did in the last example. So our constant has factors of plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 1. The leading coefficient is the same number, so it has the same factors. So we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and don't forget this fraction. 1 over 2 would be a half. Okay, that's part A. There's our possible real zeros. Part B is to actually find one that works. Now, I didn't exactly state it in here, but we could use Descartes' rule of signs. If I look at my original polynomial here, how many sign changes do I have? Zero. If I have zero sign changes, that means I have zero positive rational roots. So all the positive ones I can throw in the garbage. If I'm going to start checking these, I'm going to check minus one. I'm going to check minus two. And I'm going to check minus a half. You know, that would be a good place to start. All the positive ones we can throw in the garbage. Uh, let's start with negative 2. Why not? If I bring down my coefficients, 2x cubed, 6x squared, 5x to the first, and 2. Drop my leading number 2. Multiply and add. Multiply and add. Ooh, I guess that one didn't work. Uh, let's try positive 2. Drop our 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And we add, we get a 10. 2 times that is 20. Ooh, we're getting big. That is also not going to work. Uh, well, why did we try positive 2? I said there were no positives. Let's try negative a half. Negative a half. So negative a half times 2 is negative 1. If I add that, I get a positive 5, and we're going to run into fractions. Ooh, that's not very good. Um, let's try negative 1. Coefficients, 2, 6, 5, and 2. Drop the 2, multiply and add, multiply and add. Negative 1, that one didn't work. Well, hold on, did we? I thought I tried negative 2. Maybe I screwed something up. 2, 6, 5, and 2. Drop the 2, uh, negative 4, 2. Negative 4, 1, negative... Oh, when I was doing that the first time, you were probably screaming at your computer monitor because that one did work. So our real 0, x equals negative 2. Okay, now what we're lef left with here is 2x squared plus 2x plus 1. Uh, looks like quadratic would be the way to go. A is 2, B is 2, C is 1. So the quadratic says negative b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. Oop, 2a. All right, uh, that negative 2 is going to stay put for now. 
under the radical. I have 4 minus 8, which takes us to negative 4. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. And that's all over 2 times 2 is 4. That's a good answer, but it's not the best. All the constants, all the coefficients, are divisible by 2. So chop them all in half. Negative 1 plus or minus 1i over 2. So we have a third power poly. There's two of the solutions, the plus and the minus. And don't forget the minus 2 that we already found, the one rational real 0. All right, that's it. I hope the video helped get you ready for the test tomorrow. Good luck.